Hello, everybody. A warm welcome from Munich. Today, we want to discuss a little bit our instruments, the so-called touch grip instruments, which we developed the last, uh, would say, five to eight years. And I would like to share with you the reconstruction and development of this instrument. This is not something you can do within one week. You just say, now let's make something new. It is an idea which developed over the years. We could see in our first developments, we made two, three other developments with microsurgical instrument, that there are some disadvantages. And then you have some ideas how you could improve that. But the touch grip is a very special instrument line we developed because for this we, in addition of our own feeling and our own uh, back drawers we saw, we decided to bring in some friends who came or who are involved in the ergonomics. And you see here, uh, this stabilo pin here on the other side here, this stabilo pin, these people who developed this pin for kids to learn handwriting are very good friends of us. And so <coughs> the kids have only one possibility to hold this pen. And then they learn the handwriting. Well, you know, some kids, they hold the pen, the pencil like this or like this, very complicated. And by this, by this development of this pin, they have only one option to hold the pin right. And so you can guide the kid how to hold a pencil. And that's the same thing we thought. Let's discuss with them how we can improve our instruments also from the economic standpoint. And so they came to our clinic and they watched us doing surgery for one week. And after that, they had a lot of understanding and they could follow our thoughts. And that was the beginning of the <coughs> journey of the touch grip instrument. And then you start to include your ideas in some prototypes, like you see here. The proto these are some prototypes we started to develop. And then you start to work with them. And then you try to develop further and further. So what is some of the ideas behind the touch grip? First of all, we need to be able to pull, to pull instrument and push. And normally on the market at the moment, most of the instruments, you either have a good grip to pull or you either have a good grip to push. And these instruments we developed here now, they offer you the opportunity to have in both direction a very good grip. So you can push and pull. And you have a very good grip. That was one of the first amazing new developments. And the next thing was also hygienic. So, you know, when you have this very small the instruments which are very small, uh, how do you call this? It's uh, God, but, um, the design is not cleansable. So when it's very small design, the handle, then the dirt stacks in there and you don't get it out. So you should not have instruments with this kind of gription which do not allow to clean them very well afterwards. So you need wider gription and that's another thing we incorporate there. Then we have one thing which is everybody who used them the first time which know, will notice it. They are a little bit heavier and this we did intentionally. And it's very well known that human beings have a much better control with instruments when they are a little bit heavier than too light. 
And that's why we created them today a little bit heavier than in the past. So these are two, three new things which you find in those instruments, on any instruments of them. Now what I would like to do is to introduce to you small features of the instruments where we made little adaptation from the early microsurgical kit to the touch cap kit today. And now we move to the instrument themselves. And we have in our basic kit, we have five more or less microsurgical instruments. And on the other side to the basic kit, we have some kits, some instruments which we always use. So it, in total, the basic kit includes 11 instruments. I would like to share with you today mainly the microsurgical instruments. And it's very simple. The first instrument is a microsurgical elevator. So if you take a macrosurgical elevator, you can see clearly the big differences between a microsurgical and a macrosurgical elevator. So this elevator here has two ends. When I turn it, it's even smaller. And this is called the papilla elevator. And the papilla elevator is an instrument which allows you, after performing a sulcal incision, to do a full thickness elevation of a papilla and being as gentle as possible during the surgery. So this is the first microsurgical instrument. And then we have our microsurgical needle holder. And the microsurgical needle holder has also very important features. The same, always the same touch grip here as you can see, which allow you to pull and push, excuse me, push and pull at the same time. Then we have new, today we have a little, when you go in a very high magnification, you can see that there is today a reinforcement. This is a completely new development. This reinforcement we didn't have at the beginning of the development of microsurgical instruments because at the beginning the reinforcement when you use the 7 or 8 O suture did cut the suture. This is a new development with our partners which allow you to hold an 8 O or 7 O suture without cutting it just by holding it. When you grab a 7 O suture with an old design reinforcement here you will cut the suture. But the reinforcement allows you a much better position of your needle in the needle holder. So this is also a new development in addition in touch grip, not available in other instruments. In addition, there is a second elevator, a uh, second um, needle hold available, which is 0.15 millimeter smaller for the cracks. If somebody wants to have a very special microsurgical needle holder, we have one available which is 0.05 millimeter smaller here at the tip for smaller needles if somebody likes that. Then we have the scissor. Our microsurgical scissor is also a very special development. It's also not available in all the other kits. It's also a special development from, with our partners. And what is the specialty of this microsurgical scissor is normally a scissor is made either to cut tissue or to cut suture material. This scissor is designed and as far as we know today, it's the first scissor which allows you to cut tissue and suture. 
And this is also a special thing of our touch kit instruments kit. Then we have, as a next microsurgical instrument, we have the so-called plier, the small microsurgical plier, which has two different functions. The tip, with the tip of this plier, you grab the flap. You see, you can grab with these hooks here, the surgical hook, you can grab the flap and position the flap in the right area. And then you have a flat area here, as you can see here, is a flat area, and this area is designed like this for you to suture with the instruments. So that's something you have to learn. Suturing is done very often in the microsurgical concept with the instruments and not anymore just with your fingers. So that's why you have this flat area and that's why it's very flat and there is no reinforcement here. This is only just to grab the suture and this is a combination plier which allow you to do two things, namely suturing and grabbing tissue to place in the right position. Then we have our microsurgical <coughs> blade holder. The microsurgical blade holder is just a special blade holder to hold microsurgical blades. You can turn here the whole instrument and then here it opens and you can bring in your microsurgical blade and then you tie it and then it's stable in the microsurgical blade holder. This is for any microsurgical blade, you need a micro blade, <coughs> microsurgical blade holder. So these are the five instruments when I put them again, which are specifically designed for microsurgical approaches for our microsurgical concept. This is absolutely mandatory if you want to be gentle to the tissue, if you want to change your thinking or your attitude to do surgery in perio implant reconstructive surgery. So, and then we have all our other instruments available. These are the macrosurgical instruments which are in the basic kit in addition. So we have our own designed macrosurgical elevator. This is also a special design. And we always get the question, all the time I get this question, why do you have an elevator developed with this kind of design? This is understandable for most of you. This everybody understand. This is just a modification a little bit to a all designed elevator. Most of the elevator look like this here on the right. But this is our design and our design, you just have to use it and you will see the advantages very quickly. But this design, when I turn our elevator, this is very unusual. And indeed, this is an unusual design which we had to create for our use because we developed, as you all know, special flap designs and special approaches to the soft tissue. And there are areas where you need an instrument like this. For instance, a good example is when you perform, we call it the, the palatal releasing flap design. This is a procedure 
which is no other instrument available to perform it. So you need this special designed elevator for doing this procedure. And sometimes you have to develop for your own designed flap approach, your own designed instrument. So then we have just the cheek retractor a little bit uh, more. This is the cheek retractor, which is a little bit more gentle to the tissue, simple. Then we have the bone curette to clean out the extraction socket. This is also nothing special. This is everybody has it available. We have also, and that's something you always need to have, a perioprobe in your kit to make the measurement during the surgery. Then you have your mac macro blade holder, which you always need to have, to have the possibility to use a 15 and a 15C blade. These are our five, or oh, excuse me, six macro instruments. And then for doing perio, we have the additional kits for performing periosurgery and cleaning the root surface, working on the bone, on bone supporting, uh, <coughs> bone to support the bone. So this is an instrument to harvest bone. Let's go through briefly through this instrument. This is just an instrument where you can harvest a little bit of bone, specifically in the lower posterior area, by scratching over the surface, you can harvest a little bit of bone chips. You have a very sharp scaler to clean during the surgery a little bit. Your teeth you have in our basic kit, three curate, uh, excuse me, a scaler and two curates, more or less universal curates, one for the molar area and one more in the frontal area. So we don't have too many instruments. That was always our goal, not having too many instruments available in our kit. This is always very important. When we go to the chisel, so we have two chisels available to work on the bone around teeth. And this is, this is the typical well-known Rhodes, Rhodes chisel or back action. There are two different words for the same. So this is to work distally around the tooth to remove bone around the tooth. And the second, the second um, chisel is this one. This instrument is to remove bone into proximally. Very sharp, small instrument. And this is a so-called fady end of a chisel. This is nothing else everybody of you may know. The roll, the ocean bean chisels, the ocean bean chisel, in our opinion today, are not the right instruments anymore. They are way too big. And so we use today, this is just a very small ocean bean chisel to remove the bone on the mesial side, a little bit around and on the buccal side, on the mesial line angle around the tooth to remove the bone. Also to be more precise during the surgery, and you know today surgery is not done anymore in a way like we have done it, like we were used to do it 20, 25 years ago. I mean, I hope everybody understands that it's clear we should not do surgery the way we have done in 20, 25 years ago. And our last instrument available in the perio is our development, which many, many copies are available today on the market. This is the tunneling instrument. And the tunneling instrument, we have an angulated one 
and we have a straight one. In the past, this instrument was available in two different sizes. Again, this has changed. We only have one, si one tunneling instrument with a end, a small end on both sides, the angulated one and the straight one. So hopefully in, I'll come back to the screen and give you some further information. We hope to come back to our master classes in full time. We are starting again clinically working in with special protection. Yes, we have to change. I think we have to learn to deal with this virus in the future. We have to adapt to this new situation. But as far as I can say in our clinic, things are going pretty well. Cross your fingers. Everything has changed a little bit, but we take care of ourselves. We take care of our patient. There are new protocols coming out to let us work more protected. We have to do that. And hopefully we can come back with having you back here in Munich in our clinic, in our academy, in our master class. And there you will be able to use those instruments. Everybody who comes to us will get those instruments, will have the opportunity to work with them and to find out where are really the advantages. We get so many questions in the Instagram about the instrument, what is different, why should I buy these instruments? And we found out when people came to our master classes and get involved with those instruments and work with them, you know, this is the best way to understand why we developed this new series of instruments. And I hope I gave you now a short introduction. I can tell you this is a long development. At the end, it's a three to five year development time till the series, the touch creep series was finalized and could be brought and could be brought on the market. So thanks and I'm looking forward to seeing you all. Stay healthy. Thank you.